international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV. Uh, welcome to Millennium News 24 Power Talk. I'm your host, Eric Stevenson. Welcome again to the viewers for tuning in to our show this Sunday, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we have two distinguished gentlemen here today in the studio with us. They're not satellite, you know, zooming in. They're here in person. Um, I have Mr. Norman Seabrook, the former Department of Correction Union President of New York City. Probably one of the best there was and one of the greatest that New York City ever had. Um, ran uh, the department without doubt. Uh, um, at his best. Um, and on my right here, I have Mr. Fred Brown Jr., uh, ex-pro basketball player, and also the Rutgers Park Hall of Famer. You know, if you're a Hall of Famer out of Rutgers Park, you're saying something. It means you're shooting some ball. So those who don't know about it, hey, that's what they have Google for. Learn about Rutgers Park. And this is one of the Hall of Famers with the uh, welcome, Mr. Brown. And Thank you, brother. Mr. Seabrook, Thank it's you. a Thank pleasure. You. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. Yes. Um, as I promised our viewers, we will always entertain you with multiple subjects. We will go into health, politics, government, um, community empowerment, etc. And today we'll talk a little bit about more of some community-oriented issues. Um, but first we'll go into some of the headline news that's going on in the world or in our country. Um, and I'll ask both of you to comment on it, and then we'll go into um, a little bit about what we're going to talk about. So one of the things, point three, I had on my agenda here today, um, as you know, the caucus is about a month away for the president in Iowa. Iowa caucuses. Uh, uh, former President Donald Trump, he urges voters to hand him not just a victory, but a blowout. He wants like the strongest show ever, ever um, at the caucus. Um, others feel that that's um, his opinion. Some are liking Nikki Haley and et cetera, but he wants a strong showing. So I guess we'll wait to see, but what is your thought on that, Mr. Sieber? I think that, and first, uh, thank you for having me and yeah. to the viewers around the world uh, for tuning in. I, I think that it's important um, that I, I make this mention first, uh, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, yes. Merry Christmas, yes. all, that, all of the holidays that are upon us. But uh, getting back to your original question, I think that uh, any candidate uh, that's running for office would always expect uh, during their sound bites to promote their agenda and ask for an overwhelming support. Yes. Uh, I believe you know, that this uh, election is too early to call right now because yes. You know, we're faced with so many different things in the United States of America and abroad. Mm -hmm. I think that what we need to do is, you know, uh, ask each person that's casting a vote for whomever they're casting the vote for, how it affects them and their families. Right. What do you think? Huh? I think that uh, people put that so eloquently, but it's a major point that whomever, whatever candidate you support, you know what your issues are, what your concerns are. You see that that candidate supports those issues and concerns, and that's the way you should go. But I think Donald Trump, uh, what he's saying is that um, since all of these people want to come into the race, um, and this Nikki Haley got this big endorsement, her numbers are going up in the polls. Um, she's getting this enthusiasm of of women voters behind her, and Trump is like blowing it off, like, "Oh, this is nothing." So he's like telling the voters, you know what? Let me show them who I really am. Give me a blowout, not just a win, but a blowout. So like uh, uh, Norm and yourself say, uh, it's up to the voters to determine what it really means to them and their families. And I guess we'll wait to see whether it will be a blowout or, or not even a turnout. Who knows? The funny things happen at the polls these days, but you know, they'll vote their conscience in what's best for them. You know? um, 
number four on my agenda had um, going on. I, I hate to get into this war topic because it's so frustrating to see so many people being killed. Um, uh, and, and, and we would ask and hope to see a resolution to this, but the Pentagon has ordered a uh, UF aircraft carry to remain in the Mediterranean near Israel. So as they talked about nearing, downsizing this war and try to bring it to a, a, a head, to an end somewhat, uh, the Pentagon ordered uh, the aircraft carry to stay um, in the sea near Israel because um, they're not quite uh, confident that this thing is over. No? You know, um, when, you, when we talk about war, Every, every individual, whether it be here or abroad, has the right to defend themselves. Yes. Um, it becomes a question of um, how far do we go? Uh, do we go to the extreme, or do we allow ourselves to come up with a resolution as opposed to a solution? A resolution to whatever situation it is that we're facing, uh, whether it be, like I said, here or abroad. And how do we come to that um, that pivotal point in, in our lives. And I yes. think that it's important that people understand that there are lives that are affected by this yes. here and abroad. And um, this is something that um, is going to take some real, real um, commitment to sitting down and trying to, um, I guess, draw that line of a resolution so that this doesn't happen again. What's your thoughts, sir? Uh, I would say that, like you said, um, war is a very serious issue. And when you have a resolution, you have to be committed on both sides, understanding that human life is at stake. Absolutely. And all lives are valuable, and, and a lot of times the posture position that one takes is based upon where they sit at on that side of the war. Yes. But um, in overall general sense, you would hope that uh, intelligent, brilliant minds come together and say that we need to come to a resolution and a solution yeah. to stop this killing. There was people were just concerned. Um, I was watching on CNN this morning, uh, Inside Politics, uh, they talked about um, uh, as Biden was urging Israel and Israel saying um, that, you know, the Israelis are in, in Tel Aviv are demanding that the uh, prime minister do something about this, getting the hostages in back home and to just, like, finish it. You know, they're getting fed up now, and as it was talks about it, supposedly getting to that point, and the Pentagon now says, no, the aircraft carrier stays there, so they're not quite confident and 100% sure that that's what they're ready to do yet. So, as you both mentioned, um, we'll hope well, for the best. I, you know, look. Eric, I've been to Jerusalem twice. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen um, the Holy Land, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, when you live side by side, you have to have a resolution to what the uh, rules are going to be. And you have to follow the rules. You have to follow the rules of engagement. And, you know, we're faced with that. I, do I believe that there will be a resolution? To the situation that's occurring in the Middle East, mm -hmm. absolutely, there will be a resolution to yeah. it. It's biblical. Eventually, mm -hmm. something has to resolve. You know, it yes, can't indeed. go on forever. Um, also, I know uh, <clears throat> point five. We had the Latino Democrats. Uh, they had, there's a shift from um, quiet concern to open opposition to Biden's concessions in border talk. He had a lot of support. Now the Latino community seems to be. Um, shifting uh, uh, against um, the border talk. Um, as you know, as we all know, the borders have uh, been opened up, the gates, the doors have been there, the influx of migrants, um, which they've been trying to assist in the country. But now that their elections are going on and people are talking about now closing these borders and not allowing us to go on, so Biden, uh, Biden's in the crossfire of Support with Latino communities um, and losing support. Um, I don't know how it's going to go. What do you think, Norm? Uh, I, I, I think that um, 
it's it was uh, very um, humanitarian for mm, very much. Uh, the United States very much. Uh, to say let's take some people uh, into this country yes. that are less fortunate yes. in their country. Yes. But when does enough become enough? It's now Good at question. the point where uh, the people here, and I'm in New York City, mm. for those watching, the people here mm -hmm. that should have been entitled to the same, um, I guess, uh, opportunities as those that have arrived here have not received that. They have been put to the side. We have people living on the streets of New York City. We have people living on the streets in LA, Chicago, and other places yes. that it's now become a priority to take care of the migrants that have arrived here, not taking anything away from them, and they certainly deserve to be taken care of as well. Yes. But the people that live here that have uh, helped build the United States mm -hmm. of America mm -hmm. should have had the first opportunity mm -hmm. to receive the benefits yes. that were given to so many others. So now that others are now seeing that um, this is becoming more of a of a of a headache than it is a humanitarian right, issue, right, they right. now some want to backpedal. Right. It, it's kind of late to be backpedaling, and in order to stop it, you have to secure the border. Right. You have to say. Look, you know, we have enough right now and force these other countries that are sending them here. If we give financial aid to any of the other countries that these people come from, mm -hmm. then we need to stop giving them the financial aid and have them take care of the people that are in their country to prevent them from having to leave and flee their country to come to us. There needs to be some policing done in these countries by the people in that country. That's a very, very good point uh, because I'm, I was... Just thinking about that. If we're giving them foreign aid and stuff, what is that money being used for then? Um, if it's used to assist their their economy and country, um, poverty, et cetera, then um, why are they still fleeing, you know? Um, but uh, like you said, the humanitarian part is is um, a good gesture, but now it's an overdoing of humanitarian uh, um, um, handout. Yeah, yeah, you know, because it becomes it becomes more like they're taking advantage of this of us at this point because no one is is bold enough to say enough is enough. You know, we keep kicking the can down the road. You can't continue to kick the can down the road when the people that are here that have paid taxes that have lived here are are suffering. I was talking to someone and and Please allow me just for a few moments mm -hmm. to, to. I was talking to someone and I said to them, "Okay, we have a homeless problem here." But before they became homeless, where were they and what were they doing? So in other words, you have to backtrack now. I know you're homeless. I know you're an adult. But you didn't just pop up here as an adult being homeless. Something happened along the way that brought you to this point. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we now take a look at this mm -hmm. and back up and try to figure out how to put this puzzle back together again? As opposed to just letting it go and saying it's not my responsibility. Yeah, but the problem is they're already in the country, you know. Yeah, no, no, so, no, no. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not talking about the ones in the country. Yeah. I'm talking about the ones that are here. Yeah. I'm talking about Joe Q that's laying at 125th Street right now. Well, that's that, a big problem. It is yeah. a problem, and yeah. we have to address those problems, and we fail to do so. We continue to kick the can mm -hmm. down the road and close our eyes and make believe it doesn't exist. Yeah. These problems are not going to go away. No, they're not. But you know, we're going to take a break. And we'll be right back momentarily. Interesting topic. That it finishes out. <laughs> yeah. Hello, viewers in America and across the world. This is Eric Stevenson host of the Power Talk show on Millennium News 24. Tune in every week at Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, American Time, and also on all of your iOS and Android devices. Also, all smart TV and Apple, Amazon, and worldwide through Verizon Saturn. And also, worldwide through www.millenniumtvnews.com and that's www.millenniumnews24.com and through our social media, Millennium News. See you then.
discussion on this interesting topic um, about the influx of um, migrants in our country and state and city and how Latino Democrats are kind of going against the, uh, they, they're shifting from, they're concerned about Biden's concession on curtailing this uh, migrant influx. So um, as Mr. Seabrook just brought up, you know, um, the gesture was great. Um, no other president that I could think of have has done such a thing to extend help outside by just turning the blind side and let people come make a living here. But now, where's the line going to be drawn as far as when is it too much? Because now you created a new population of homelessness, uh, uh, a new population of overcrowded hospitals, et cetera, uh, 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 more burden on the medical system, but health system, but what are we going to do now? So um, you don't turn it back or backtrack and say, okay, now you came in, now you march back out. I mean, we're in a situation. I mean, Fred, what is your thought on this? I think they got to have real conversations. The border issue has been an issue for many, many decades. Yeah. So it has to be a real conversation. And, and, and you have to be able to agree to disagree at certain times, but again, come up with a solution that it really works because the impact now is really, really taking a toll on the on the people of New York City and and here in this country. When you talk about the other the homeless, when you talk about the migrants, even from other areas that were here, they're sleeping in the streets. So it has to be a real a real addressment, but a real conversation. Your feelings sometimes get hurt, you know, because of of how it goes. But you got to have them because the realness of it in real time is discussing that. And you, you got this is impacting on on a lot of the city programs, a lot of the youth programs, because a lot of uh, open fields where kids were having different on um, recreational activities have now been taken over. So it's not just affecting one area; it's affecting the city in a whole. We have to. We have, it has. It has to be a solution, and it has to be a real one. Yes, and, and I'm just thinking. Um, you know, uh, I I don't think it's fair, right? Uh, uh, first. Uh, President Biden has extended that hand out to Mexico, uh, mm -hmm. other countries, um, Venezuela, et cetera, uh, even people from Africa, uh, many from Africa is here, even in our city here. And um, now to shift your concern that he says, you know, it's gotten out of control and we have to do something about it now or to limit the influx or the, the people coming in, um, you know, and to say now you, you want to think about shifting support. Um, I mean, what is he supposed to do? I mean, what would you think, Norm, about something? I mean, what is it, if you was the president in a position like this, I mean, what should he do? I think that... Um, if, I mean, if, because if leaders was, are saying if, that if he doesn't continue to allow them to come in, and they feel like he's against immigrants, and they look like, well, then why should we vote for you? I don't, I don't, I don't um, think that um, it's a matter of being against immigrants uh, on the president's part if he decides to uh, limit the amount of people that are allowed to cross into the United States of America. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the, the the priority mm -hmm. is the people of the United States of America first mm -hmm. and foremost. Um, Right. In order to be a, a good uh, shepherd, you have to uh, take care of your flock, you know. Uh, and then if there's others that want to join in, uh, that, that's all well and good, and, and that's accepted. But as far as the president is concerned and the position that he's in at this point, is he has to get his people that are around him to come up with a real resolution to the problem that is affecting every single uh city, uh, municipal city uh, uh, in the country, mm -hmm. and in each one of these uh, cities that uh, bring on um, individuals that are less fortunate, migrants being the, the, the topic of discussion, I think that what they're doing is they're, they're just pulling it, but they're not doing anything about it. They're making it sound good, but it's financially crushing the United States of America. It's crushing yes. cities, it's yes. crushing states, it, because no one wants to say the words as to, okay, we got it, let's, let's now close this down, 
Let's reorganize, do what it is that we need to be doing, because if you don't do that, it's only going to continue to grow. There comes a point where you have to say, that's enough. There's no more that I can do and or give. So he's actually just living up to his responsibility and taking a, a, a step that needs to be taken. But you can't throw all of this on the back of the president. No, either. You have no. the Congress, you have the Senate. That's right. Do you have the three branches of government that need to sit down together and really say, what are we going to do that is going to not only appease the American people, let them be happy, but not alienate the others that are here. We can't just throw them back out and tell them, all right, get out of here now. Right, right. It, it doesn't work like that. Right, right, you know, right. you get people to say, well, this president did it years ago. And yeah. I, I get all of that. But at the end of the day, we're living in the 21st century right now. We're not living back then. We, we have to figure out how do we go forward from the point that we are now so that it's productive as opposed to counterproductive. And yeah. each one of these individuals that are here have to become productive members of society in our country and or they can't stay. Yes, well, that's, that's you know, Norm, I mean, I, you couldn't put it any better. That's like a crystal clear explanation of exactly what it is. And um, so I just think it's, um, you know, uh, it would seem unfair because I know Latinos, Democrats, some may see um, that the opportunity for suffering Latinos was given the opportunity to come and it was feeling good to see so many coming in and now the president says, hey, you know, now we have to take it easy. And they're getting, um, being displeased. Uh, I don't think it's correct. I don't think it's fair. And I think now we have to deal with what's here. Um, like you said, Norm, and move forward and make it productive more than, rather than non-productive. Mm -hmm. Because then we're going to be in a situation that none of us are going to be pleased with. Um, but we have to get something done. So. Uh, President uh, Biden, um, I'm with you on that one. Uh, with you on that one because um, it, it's what makes sense. And whatever president took that position, it makes sense to the American people. So um, um, that's where we at. So, Mr. Brown. Um, yes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do with your organization? Um, um, well, I what you do uh, two, two that um, I'm involved with. One is the Kevin Shaw Jr. Foundation. Uh, that organization is based around anti-gun violence, scholarships, um, high school kids going into college. I'm about 33 to date. They're small scholarships. As the foundation grows. Anti-gun violence, too? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good. And um, I do an annual annual event, which I'm going to expand now to two. Yeah, one is held in, in Rucker Park because of its basketball history. Do it around the youth. We bring in speakers, elected officials. We have presentations and recognitions. Although it's a basketball event with the youth, mm -hmm. the message is about anti gun yeah, violence. so you get to, you know. I see you play pro ball and you traveled around the world. Slam dunking all these <laughs> balls, man. So, where was where have you traveled and played in pro well, ball? At? I got drafted by Phoenix oh. uh, in the NBA. Okay, um, played in China, Philippines, Taiwan, Japan. and uh, that was by choice too. Anyway, you know, I, back then, politics of the game was a little different. Now, um, I still played in the league. You know, going through mm -hmm. what I had to go through. You know, it wasn't just like it was a cake cakewalk. But if I just followed suit and did the things I needed to do, I could have still played in the league. But at the time, I just didn't want to. At least you brought it back through. home, and, and you're doing um, scholarship programs, and right. you're, you're taking guns off the street. You're guiding you to the right to a path of straight and narrow to uh, do right things in our society. So. You know that that's that's meaningful. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, you could have been selfish and said, you know, forget about that and stay playing ball. But you brought it back in a different way. Um, it comes, you know, sometimes it you don't realize, you know, what what path you're walking down. And then you look and you see it's before you. You realize this is where you're at. This is what you're doing. So something positive. I think everyone in the country has been affected by gun violence, whether it's a family member, a friend. 
And uh, you know, so it's always concerning the issue with the youth and the kids coming up, trying to get the right messages, the positive messages, You're talking about anti-gun violence. You know, what is it that, that gets these kids moving in those areas? So you got to have certain life skills, life curriculum, certain, you know, things that teach critical thinking, mm -hmm. self-discipline, self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You know, all those are things that, that give a kid their inner confidence. Yeah. It helps them with their mental health, you know. Yeah, so yeah. all those things are, are, are relevant. Are the Rutgers um, tournaments still going on? Well, no. pro, pro Rutgers not going on, but mm -hmm. each one teach one, which was a part of, of Pro Rutgers, Bob McCullough, Fred Crawford. You have the um, the, the celebrity one. Right? Who, who, who were some of the entertainers that played in that? Oh, and look, I mean, you go from Kobe Bryant, uh, Stephon Marbury, Allen Iverson, uh, I mean, all the all of the the current Raptors had teams. Chris Brown played. Uh, you know, Fat Joe had a team. Jay Z had a team. Mm. Uh, Eve Ruff. I mean, almost everybody across the board in that in that space had a team. A lot of the NBA All Stars and everybody came through and played for many years out there. That's so great. that's still going on on the on the EBC side. Still a lot of different, um, especially events and promotions. That go on, so the park is still real relevant. Mm -hmm. is. So, how is what is your success rate in getting across to the young and, and getting your message across to them? Um, I mean, for me and for us, if you if you get one kid, mm -hmm. then you you in the right direction because mm -hmm. it's it's not just getting them to trust you and respect you; mm -hmm. it's then being able to articulate and get them the understanding. Because mm -hmm. when you go through the generation gaps, a lot of times they say, "Oh, you know, okay, that that was in your time." And this time, so you got to kind of stay, stay relevant with the youth, and make sure you can deliver that message where they understand it and they respect it. There are so many young today. Now I'm seeing all the prisons now just filling up more and more now. You know, one time we thought that the prison population was taking a decline. Um, and now it seems like uh, I'm just seeing so many young yeah. now going into the JIP prisons. And um, now they're talking about... Um, how bad the systems are, the prisons are, especially here in New York yeah. City, closing of Rikers Island. Um, it's so old, and, and they talk about those parts with asbestos and all kinds of different things going on. I didn't know Norm might be able to talk more to that on that. Mm -hmm. um, and he um, was the head of the corrections uh, union. What do you uh, I think that. Um, First of all, I, I, I commend you, Brother Brown, for the work that you're doing yeah, with the you. youth. And and, and touche to you and the brothers and sisters that are out there doing that. And I think that gun violence is a real serious problem, uh, in, in especially here in the city of New York. I, I had a, my second cousin, uh, Chinks Drugs, he was a rapper uh, mm -hmm. out of Queens. And he mm -hmm. was gunned down and killed uh, unnecessarily uh, over a beef. And I think that a lot of the youth today think that it's a badge of honor to pull out nine millimeter with uh, 20 rounds in it uh, and fire this weapon uh, indiscriminately and, mm -hmm. and affecting other people's lives. Um, that said, I, 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 I watched uh, in my career Rikers Island, mm -hmm. uh, which for people around the world that don't know, Rikers Island is the largest municipal jail system in the country, uh -huh. over 400 acres. Uh, it's a jail system, it's not a prison system. It's mm -hmm. a place where you stay until such time a judge sentences you and you go then to state prison. But in the city's jail system, uh, it, it, it is a huge population. 400 of, acres. 400 acres. Wow. Um, and I think that what the city of New York is doing, and I think that they really need to revisit this as opposed to closing Rikers Island and building borough jails in the communities, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, they don't mention Staten Island in building jails, but they mention um, the different parts of the city of New York in the other four boroughs. Understand that. Why I, is that? I mean, I, Staten Island's people would not I, go to I, jail in Staten Island. No, they oh. do, I'm oh. sure, but I guess their, um, their political connections or whatever prevented that from being on the blueprint of, of building jails in different boroughs. Oh, I and I think that when you look at. Um, in my opinion, the amount of money that you want to spend to build a jail uh, to house individuals in a community, uh, that will affect 
the child in that community. And people say, well, what do you mean it's going to affect the child? If you're walking a six-year-old to school in the morning or the seven-year-old to school in the morning, they say, Mommy, Daddy, what is that building right there? That's jail. And if you don't do what you're supposed to, then they're going to put you there. Mm -hmm. We continue to program our children to make them believe mm -hmm. certain things that we tell them. Spending billions of dollars to build a jail when we have a homeless problem in the city of New York we have a problem with migrants in the city of New York, and to take the funds that we have in the city and the state of New York to build a facility when you can turn around and with the 400 plus acres of property that you have on Rikers Island, you could formulate a real structure with a real sense of programs involved so that the individual does not have to continue to repeat and come back to jail. You can't take an individual kid, in my opinion, and I went to school for bad boys, mm -hmm. but I went to school upstate New York. They took me out of the environment that I was in and sent me someplace where they gave me, I guess, the opportunity to know yeah. who I am, to learn about myself. You can't take a child in on any street in New York City, sit them in a room and talk to them about gun violence, and then put them back on the street with gun violence. You yeah, can't do work. that. That's no, we're going to have to take a break on this. Yeah, okay. We're going to let you fire right back up right after this break. <laughs> okay. Stay tuned. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Welcome to the world of Millennium News 24. We bring news, we analyze news, and we make a bridge between you and the eventful world. 24-7, Millennium News 24 team is at your service. Don't miss today's America, Editorial Today, and Global Democracy with host Tofadir Noor. You also won't want to miss Todd Goldfinger Show, Goldfinger Music Hour, Noon News with host Todd Goldfinger. And to stay connected with all top and trending news, don't even miss Millennium News Hour with host Tanziba Nori. Millennium News 24 is available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia, available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV. Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Millennium TV 24 News, news you need to know. With these conversations here, but we're going to continue on as the time goes on, well, Mr. Seabrook, as you was mentioning, um, I'm going to let you continue on because um, we need to get into this uh, situation about, uh, um, like you were saying, the closing of Rikers Island. Um, you know, it's a big topic right here in, in New York State and around the country. Everyone is hearing about it. The federal courts are involved now, and they want to uh, assign a special monitor for, I don't know if it's mismanagement or it's not being run properly, but you... Why don't you tell us a little about what oh, you've done? I, I, I mean, that you at, at the time, um, as a former president of the largest correction union in in the uh, state uh, or oh, America, probably in this uh, municipal corrections, um, at the president, um, you run. You was oversight of how many officers? Thousands. 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 So why don't you share with I, us? You know, uh, yeah. you know and, and, and thank you for allowing me to con continue on this yeah. on this subject, is a, a lot of it is mismanagement in the Department of Correction. And when you have individuals that don't know what they're doing, uh, it can create a problem. Everybody deserves a job, but every job is not for everybody. And the more you um, allow things to, like we said before, like I said before, kicking the can down the road mm. doesn't get any better. It just continues. Do so, us, yeah. is there a monitor needed? Someone's needed to to to, to determine what is permissible and what's non-permissible. Mm. Um, Rikers Island, in in my opinion, is is a name. It's a name, but there has been a lot of uh, unjust done on Rikers Island, mm. whether it be from the inmates towards the officers, the officers towards the inmates, mm. the civilians towards both. It it, it 
Every, there's enough blame for to go around for mm, everybody. Mm, mm. And I think that what's important is that it, it, it be corrected, but be corrected with such a um, direction and resolution to the situations that they face on a daily basis. Inmates don't want bad guys around them because they get cut, they get slashed, they get sexually assaulted, officers get assaulted, all kinds of things. So how do you draw the line? I, I, you draw you, know, you yeah. draw the line by reorganizing. Mm. And how you reorganize? If you take, uh, if you have a thousand inmates, mm -hmm. and only a hundred of these thousand inmates are the problem in the system, then mm -hmm. you need to take this one hundred and put them somewhere where you deal with them and try to get them to understand the policies and procedures of the agency. But if you re if you know this correctly. A lot of people in the city's jail system, on the streets of New York and all over the country, they're followers. They're mm. not. They're not eagles. They're not mm. leaders. Mm. They just go along to get along because they're missing something in their life. Mm. If you don't sit down, God will sit you down. Mm -hmm. You are going to understand sooner or later that this road that you're on is not productive mm. for you. Mm. Whether it be um, being shot up, whether it be stabbed up, whether it be whatever it may be, you are going to sit down and understand sooner or later, that's not for you. Mm -hmm. Saying that, I say that what you have to do on Rikers Island, I'm not saying that Rikers Island needs to be closed, I'm not saying that. I am simply saying it needs to be reorganized. Mm -hmm. It needs to become a more um, accepting, acceptable place for not only the inmate, but for the visitors that go there as well. Mm -hmm. The visitor that goes there, the mother that goes there to see her child, after she gets off of work, all, working all day long, she has to make it over to Rikers to see her child. She loves her child. She gets there, they tell her, well, you can't visit. What, what's the problem in letting them visit 10 o'clock at night? It, they're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. But this woman or this man has to work all day long, go home, take care of two or three other kids, mm -hmm. then try to make it out there to that child. If you don't do that, here's what happens. That child becomes very depressed. Mm -hmm. That child then acts out, whether it be assaultive or whatever, or suicidal. Mm -hmm. There are, look at Khalif Browder. Mm -hmm. That was in Rikers Island, Drunk, yeah, and, and he yeah. said he didn't do it. The yeah. criminal justice that system, was bad it was horrible. horrible. It was horrible yeah. that this young man killed himself yeah, yeah, because yeah. he couldn't deal with the depression mm -hmm. that was happening to him and the injustice that was occurring with him. There are so many injustices that occur in our country that it that you need to really reorganize and say, wait a minute, we're dealing with millennium now. You know? In the Browder case, wouldn't that be on fall the responsibility on, on, on behalf of the um of the uh prison, of the of the jail? No, 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 no. The because when, staff? He, when he when he killed himself, when yeah. he committed suicide, he was home. Yeah. He had come home and committed suicide. But the demons that this kid had to that suffer with, with while he had to yeah. be there is just unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And we have to allow ourselves to take a look at that and say, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. We cannot continue to pull down the shade. It's time to pull the shade up and say, this is unacceptable. We have to do something better. I would suggest changing the name of Rikers Island mm -hmm. and changing it to something else and spending the, the amount of money that's necessary to construct a facility that is conducive to the situations that we're faced in the city of New York. Putting a, a jail in the neighborhood down the block is gonna decrease your value of your home. It's gonna add ac extra vehicles to the community because these officers have to get to work. It's gonna add buses with high diesel fuel and everything else when the asthma mm -hmm. is that bad. It's gonna add that to the community. It's gonna add so much more to the community and people don't seem to understand that mm -hmm. that is counterproductive. Mm -hmm. Just rebuild something more conducive and give people the opportunity to be involved in it. If you want an oversight, you want somebody to take a look at it, no problem. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, you shouldn't have nothing to worry about. Do what it is that you have to do. It's no secrets no more. Let it be what it's supposed to be and let's move on so that we can be a country that is working together to solidify the the event, the not the event, I'm sorry, the the extra years that our children have as opposed to being gunned down in the street or ending up in Rikers Island or ending up in a prison system or anything like that. Well, they should have reached out to a person like you to get the advice with the experience you have 
Uh, you should have been an advisor to the mayor on this because this makes a hundred percent sense to me. Um, especially that's that's a great idea. I never thought of it to just eliminate and change the name Rikers Island. That's it. Change that puts a new face on the Absolutely. whole thing. It's not Rikers, the Rikers Island. Rikers Island is down the drain now. It's, it's a gone. new a new system, it's new it's name. Um, but back to the Browder case. Do you think this should be follow up counseling to these young uh, uh, men coming out these jails? that they uh, tend out, outpatient at, uh, when they go home to prevent uh, uh, a suicide like this? Absolutely. First and foremost, you, you don't have enough clinical staff mm -hmm. to be able to monitor or work with individuals because it's just a Band-Aid. They don't want to do nothing about it. They just want to say, you came into my office, we talked, he's okay. We're getting... There's not enough concern there. It, there is no concern. Uh, um, because more monies and this should be put in the prisons because there was wrong what, what happened to the Well, I shouldn't yeah. say there is no concern because one of the viewers are going to probably say, I'm concerned. You probably are concerned. But what I'm suggesting is that there be, like you suggested, mm -hmm. a follow-up mm -hmm. to these individuals that are incarcerated and released and give them something more. You know, I look, I'm 63 years old. When I grew up, there was Job Corps. Okay. Yes, I remember you you had now. the opportunity to, to leave New York City, go wherever it is where they had them at, Arizona, um, you know, remember. out in that the was Midwest. A good program. It was a great program. Great. Yeah. All right. It gave people the opportunity to come in to who they were. Get a trade. Yes, they, they, yes. Oh, man, it was Those so things good. are gone. Yeah. You can't even go to a high school these days and take up uh, auto mechanics or computer tech. You can't do that anymore because it's been scaled down so much. That you know what it's 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 just a matter of getting by. It's not even a matter anymore of of being productive for the child. It's just like you got through, you got through. We can't just keep yeah. passing you over. Yes, yes. We have to get you involved yes. in what you're supposed yes, to be yes. doing. That will bring down the amount of gun violence that occurs because it, it's it's like you said, uh, uh, Brother Brown. You have been out there. You've traveled the world. Mm -hmm. You've seen different countries. You've seen different cultures. You've participated in all of this, and you're still here because of the upbringing. Our upbringing has changed. Mm -hmm. There was a time when fathers and mothers were in our lives. Yes. Now the mother wants to hang out with the child. The father wants to hang out with the child. They want to wear the yeah. same attire, and every, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Somebody's got to be the parent, and somebody's got to be the child. And there has to be some type of discipline involved in raising our children, because each one of these children are our children. We're going to take a break. I tell you it's getting hot. We're going to need you to chime in on this, uh, Fred Brown, after Mr. this. Mr. Brown's going to get there. <laughs> yeah, we, we got to hear him, because now oh, it's yeah. all we're coming together, you know? Yeah. We'll be back after this break. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the world of Millennium News 24. We bring news, we analyze news, and we make a bridge between you and the eventful world. 24-7, Millennium News 24 team is at your service. Don't miss today's America, Editorial Today, and Global Democracy with host Topader Noor. You also won't want to miss Todd Goldfinger Show, Goldfinger Music Hour, Noon News with host Todd Goldfinger. And to stay connected with all top and trending news, don't even miss Millennium News Hour with host Tanziba Nauri. Millennium News 24 is available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Millennium TV 24 News, news you need to know. Welcome back to Millennium News 24 Power Talk. Yes, it's on fire. But we're continuing on uh, with Norm Seabrick and Fred Brown Jr. As you just heard, um, all the, the, the needs and 
uh, um, suggestions and ideas. I hope the mayor gets to hear this interview because you know what? We have a solution here today for the Rikers Island problem. But, uh, Mr. Brown, um, as uh, Norman was just talking about, you, um, uh, what's needed with all the young, and I see how you fit right in now with what you're doing um, in the scholarships and helping young, the buyback programs, the gun buybacks. So how do you um, see this picture on Rikers well, Island and, and your role in what you're doing? I don't even think bef to go before it has to get to Rikers Island, you got to start young. You got to go from K, well, you got to start when they're five and six years old. And you got to get them to understand, and again, I say life skills. Life skills are critical because that's your critical thinking. That's your self-esteem. That's your discipline. Okay, I played basketball. Some, some kids play baseball. Some kids play football. Mm -hmm. That gives you a sense of discipline when you're playing a team sport. You're understanding that mm -hmm. everything is not all about you. But when you come outside of that and a kid feels that they have nothing in life, they, they feel despair, desperate. Desperation puts a whole nother view and spin on what a child sees and as they grow up. But for them, it's by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm going home to a house that might not be worth anything to them. I'm, I have no outlook on life. Mm -hmm. So when they come out and they hit that pavement, they think is, how do I survive out here? How do I get money? How do I do this? And at the same time, mm -hmm. you got a lot of anger being built up in them. You got a lot of, lot of low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So kids hide low self-esteem by being extra vocal by mm -hmm. being a little more aggressive mm -hmm. because they don't want to show a weakness. Mm -hmm. But what, what I realized through, through talking to, to kids, and not just small kids, even when you get a little older, that that when you talk to them and you give them a, self, a sense of self of worth, mm -hmm. it changes them. They, they start to see different. Even when I was coming up, and I use the term the underworld, I'll just say underworld, because it's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. So but what's the difference? The difference is when you have somebody say, listen, I'm doing this. That's what I felt I had to do. I had an over hand. You're a good kid. You is that. Stay away. Keep mm -hmm. it safe. A lot of those things, not to say that that's, that's a, a good thing or what they may be doing, but the, the sense of thinking, the character was still different. Mm -hmm. So when you're telling the kid, listen, all right, I might not be doing what I'm supposed to be doing in a sense, but you're a good kid. You come up that neighbor. Make sure y'all keep that kid safe. Y'all keep mm -hmm. that family good mm -hmm. because they're good. They represent good. They're doing good because as we get more good people, more positive people, that changes our outlook. We have more lawyers, engineers, more but doctors, sanitation workers, whatever it is, when you come with a positive message, like like the old doctor can say, be the best you can be at whatever it is. Right. So that's what it all comes down to. That's but right. you gotta catch them young. Right. Like you can't you can't come later on. You gotta catch them young. I got mm -hmm. some kids that 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 um gang members, they they graduated from college, mm -hmm. didn't want to stay as in the, in the town where they schooled at and had to come back to whether it's New York, New Jersey, Tri-State area, they felt the need to come back to that community. Mm -hmm. And that community environment wasn't good because mm -hmm. you're coming right back mm -hmm. to what, what drags you down. So until you can lift those things up, you have to come up with certain things. So my thinking and my thought process has always been life skills. And not from so much to say a rose scholar, mm -hmm. but from, from a mentor, for somebody that you could look at to mm -hmm. see person was successful mm -hmm. and start teaching kids about and now going into with all the AI you got to understand what STEM means you got to mm -hmm. understand all this stuff because that's where we're going mm -hmm. so if you're not there you're going to get left and it's going to be the same cycle again mm -hmm. because you're not going to be able to make a make a, a decent living mm -hmm. as we just mentioned earlier about job core uh, we just talked about it um that was so important growing up you know I remember growing up and always hear about the kids in the neighborhood talk about, oh, I'm leaving for Job Corps, you know, and they was in the street, there was nothing else left. So they would say, you know, we're leaving for Job Corps. Mm -hmm. And they would go and maybe a year, how long was Job Corps? No? About a year. About a year. Mm -hmm. In a year's time, we would receive right, their right. return, you know, and they but some came back, some stayed out there and lived out and there. And they got jobs and, yeah, right. They got, yeah. yeah. And yeah. some who came back, Came back a different human being. Yeah, it's a guess. It they said, "Man, I was a job corps in Arkansas or, or Oklahoma, wherever it was. They sent them to a new environment. They came back, mm -hmm. and then they was job ready with skills. And they said, I'm an, I mean, I fix electronic devices now.' I said, Are you serious?' Right, and right. they would get a uh, entry level job that would go into better pay down the road very quickly. Um, 
and these these skills, you know, they, oh, yeah. what, what, exactly what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. And wow. to eliminate job card, I'm gonna really go research after this show about whatever happened to it, and 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 if it's possible to even bring the topic or subject back up to our legislators and Congress and see if we could uh, um, restart it or, or ignite it again, mm -hmm. because it's so important. Because what you're talking about and Norm talked about, these skills, this was Job Corps. Absolutely. Right. And you know what exactly. was good about it? It took them out that environment yes. of right. the guns, yes. right. of the drugs, yes. of this fancy lifestyle that they want to live up to. It took mm -hmm. them away, gave them a different perspective, let them focus, gave them a trade. If you wanted to come back to college, after mm -hmm. Job Corps, many went on to college. That's right. If they chose to do that. Yes. But some, yeah. And I remember some, they even taught them construction trades, mm -hmm. plumbing. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, like I said, the electrical, carpentry, et cetera. Many mm -hmm. came back and went to the unions and got yeah. 40, right. $50 right. an hour yeah. jobs, mm -hmm. who owned homes, was married, and mm -hmm. life is turned around, you know? That's so that's, that's, that's true. That goes back to something that Norman said earlier in terms of the trades. Mm -hmm. Like there was a time in high school you could take up trades. Yes. So yes. you come out, you have some elect electrical or some plumbing experience, you're able to get a job mm -hmm. and start. Those things are gone. Mm -hmm. So now again, we now we we into a whole new thing in the AI it's gonna be a, a whole totally different That's scenario. Cool. This so is totally why we have to focus on our legislators, who's mm -hmm. Congress, who's in these state city houses, wherever city halls. We need to put more focus and emphasis back on education, um, job training, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and do something for the young. Mm -hmm. If the young is our future, and we don't put some effort there, yeah. then what is going to be the outcome of our future yeah. Yeah. what is going to be america what is going to be new york in the future mm -hmm. and again it's going to go down in the direct serious conversations it has like, to be a lot of times people don't like to have certain conversations because it, it doesn't feel good it might not be politically correct but when you look at it look at look at kids going to college now and everything mm -hmm. and with all of the, the new technology a lot of those mid-level executive jobs all those jobs are gone mm -hmm. they're never coming back mm -hmm. when you look at even if you just travel on the highway to toll booths those total jobs know. are gone. And then I was so now, what are people, you, you see what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. when you start moving forward, it's almost like plumbing, electrical, concrete. That is, that's never going to go away. No. It's so, always going to be here. Right. And when, when you talked about the tolls, look what they're trying to do here in New York with congestion pricing. Yeah. Okay? They want to charge you to oh, drive sorry. south of 60th Street. I'm telling you. And what I don't understand, and for the life of me, I don't understand it. If I fly to another country, and I've been different places. Mm -hmm. When you get off the aircraft, before you even get through customs, they're taxing you. You're gonna pay right. to come into their country. Mm -hmm. why, why is it not that when people fly internationally into the United States, internationally, mm -hmm. into JFK or Newark or wherever right. the place may be, that they don't pay an entry fee as well so that we can offset the cost of the transportation hey, that you good continue point. to do it. I hey, don't understand I'm that. with that. That makes I mean, sense to me. All it is. If we pay, they pay. Exactly. Yeah. But they're getting a free pass. And, and it's just unacceptable to put it on the backs of the tri-state area to come south of 60th Street. Mm -hmm. and, with, and when you were talking about getting Congress involved, uh, Lena Jeffries is doing a phenomenal job considering what he's dealing with yeah, at right. this point. Yeah, yeah. And kudos to the man. For, for the leader for stepping up and ensuring that he has to do all of these things. There's a lot of people that are always gimme, 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 gimme. But nobody wants to put in the work. You understand? You gotta put the work in. You have to put the work in. And and brother Fred, I I commend you for what you're doing with with your program and 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 you know and, and Eric knows Charles Oakley personal friends of mine, yeah, Jason so, Williams, so, so, all these guys. So yeah, so you know DC when 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 it starts to happen and, and listen, put you guys together again and let's reunite to do what it is that we're supposed to do so that we can help it, it in some type of way. I don't want to talk about it. I want to be right. about it. How do we get in contact with your uh, organization if, if the viewers want to um, reach you? They can always go online and just pull up Kevin Shaw Jr. Foundation. Or Kevin up. Shaw. Kevin Shaw. Junior Foundation. Kevin Shaw right. Junior Foundation. And also another entity is the Children of Promise. Children of the Promise. Children of Promise. Those kids are kids incarcerated parents. So they they have that's two very sites. important. Oh, as that's well. a, that's extremely critical, important. Right? Two sites, one in Brooklyn, one in the Bronx. And um, this, this past week, Sharon Content, that's the president and founder of mm -hmm. it. We had a meeting at DYCD 
we talked with the commissioner to see about some other things and programs and services that might could be implemented in certain areas of other city and specifically maybe the Bronx and certain areas that are underutilized in mm -hmm. terms of city's investment of dollars mm -hmm. into those communities. So and then how do you how do you prevent and intervent some of these kids that's in the program that's already feeling a certain type of way because they can't really communicate with their parent, you're trying to keep them on a, on a certain path and road. You, you might have them there during during their two, three hours after mm -hmm. school, then when they go back home, they back into the environment mm -hmm. again. And anything that you might have made progress with is now is then fell and back again. Listen, and that's a hell of a lot better than spending billions of dollars to build a jail. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. you're, you're doing something, you're yeah. bringing that child along, right. and, and you're making it come together, and, and I think that that's important. Yeah. And I was thinking and, about that Rikers Island, the 400 acres. Yeah. I was saying, I was visualizing a 400 acre University of Technology. So it could, it's a huge complex that can and be to used. remove the prison, yep. the jail. Absolutely. It, it put so many things that could some be done. of the young to to, so many to and, education right, and right. universities and get rid of prisons and jails. And let me just, and let me just give out my uh, my, my okay. Instagram if, if people want to reach yeah, out. Yeah, please. They're gonna be uh, looking for that advice. You can reach out to me at Norm N O R M S E A B R O O K. Uh, that's me on Instagram, Norm Seabrook. So I'd be happy to, to you know, interact with you. And Brother Stevenson, I just want to thank you, man. You've got a fantastic show here. You've got a great audience. Exactly. You're doing great things. And God bless you and God speed thank to you, you brother, thank because you. you are truly a blessing in, in this time. Now. Thank you. And, you know, as we're going to close out here, I thank the viewers um, always for tuning into the show. Um, this is one of the shows where you're always going to get real life talk. If you don't want to deal with reality or the facts of life, it's another show. But here, you're going to get it. I thank you, Mr. Seabrook um, and, and Mr. Brown. Love you, bro. For Not being here. You. Two great men. I must say, if I have 100 shows, this would definitely be one of the best ones. And um, with the ideas I'm hearing here, I would love to see both of these men in Congress. <laughs> so... We'll talk about some campaigns, maybe. Uh, but viewers, thank you for listening. Uh, God bless you all. Enjoy all your holidays, whatever you may celebrate, whether it's Christmas, Hanukkah, etc. Let it be in peace with your families and love them while they're alive and while they're here. And you know what? Touch the life of a young one um, like Mr. Fred Brown here does and Mr. Norm talked about. Let's do something about this incarceration movements and live on and have a better society and focus on education. Thank you all. God bless. God bless you. And you've been watching Power Talk Thanks. right here at Millennium News TV. And I'm Eric Stevenson, your host. God bless you. And thank you, Zainable. Millennium TV, bridging communities worldwide. We broadcast diverse international content from Europe, Asia, Africa, and now right here in the USA. Watch us via Roku on your smart TV. Download the Millennium TV app from the App Store to stream our shows anywhere, anytime. Millennium TV.